Hi, I'm Stefan Kessler from Definity, and today I'm going to talk to you about upgrades. Upgrades might seem like a simple problem at first, so let me start by um, telling you some of the challenges we had to face with upgrades. First of all, we are running a distributed and decentralized algorithm, and we need to make sure that upgrades are going to be applied at the same logical time everywhere. What makes things even worse is that uh, we have machines that might be arbitrarily far behind, they might fail, or they might even be malicious. Some of the goals we had with upgrades is that we wanted to allow arbitrary changes to the Internet Computer Protocol. We wanted to preserve all canister state. We wanted to keep the downtime as little as possible. We wanted the rollout to be autonomous. And we wanted all of that to be triggered by the governance system based on voting. Before diving into the technical details, I would first like to talk a little bit about how we trigger upgrades. In the Internet computer, we have a component called the registry, which is implemented as a canister in the NNS subnetwork. And essentially, it stores all configuration information for the Internet computer. It's essentially a version key value store, so each mutation in the registry shows up as a new version in the registry. We are upgrading on a per subnet basis, and each subnetwork has a record in the registry that indicates who the members of the subnetwork are and what version it's supposed to be running. Now, in order to trigger an upgrade, we simply update the version information for the particular subnetwork that we want to upgrade. In a real-world setup, we would use the governance system to decide whether or not a version should be upgraded so that no individual has the power to, uh, to do this change all by themselves, but the community has to vote on it. I'm not going to go into details about the governance in this talk, though. Note that the registry contains the desired configuration, and you cannot actually know which version is running in a subnetwork. Now that we have seen how to trigger an upgrade, let's have a look at how we execute them. And for that, we need a little bit of background on how the Internet Computer Protocol works. So the Internet Computer is structured into layers. We have four of those layers. We have a P2P layer, which does the networking. We have a consensus layer, which agrees on the order of messages. We have the message routing layer, which makes sure that messages arrive in the canisters they are destined for. And we have an execution layer, which makes sure that canister code is executed based on the messages we receive. Now, in this talk, I'm going to talk about upgrades of these four layers. I'm not going to talk about upgrades of canister code. The Internet computer executes state machine replication in each subnetwork. State machine replication um, makes sure that state is identical on each node based on having a deterministic state machine and an order on the inputs to the state machine. In the Internet computer, the order is guaranteed from consensus and the uh, state machine we're executing is uh, the message routing layer, the execution layer, and the canister code. In order to build state at height h, we would have to take uh, the state at the previous height, h minus 1, and apply input messages from uh, block h to that state. Now, as I said before, the input of these blocks is something that was agreed upon by consensus. Because of state machine replication, the code we are executing needs to be deterministic when processing a block at height h. And since upgrades might change the state machine, including the execution and message routing layer, and it might also change details in the consensus layer, such as how an authorization happens. And further, we might also change network protocol details uh, during those upgrades. We need to make sure that upgrades are running at the same time everywhere relative to the block height. Note that not all nodes are going to arrive at the same block height at the same physical time because we are running a distributed system and we don't have a global time. And also, some of the nodes might be really far behind, even up to weeks. So that means that for some period of time, the nodes in a subnetwork are going to run different IC versions, and we need to be able to cope with that. Let's have a look at the overall process so far. We have a subnetwork A, which is running IC version 1. Then we are triggering an upgrade to version V2 at registry version R. Now, nodes in subnetwork A will eventually agree to use that new version at uh, registry version R at a certain block height H. Now, What's going to happen is that nodes running uh, version v1 will create blocks and compute state up to and including then height h. And we will have the new versions, the v2 nodes, take over at height h plus 1. Between states h and h plus 1, we now need a snapshot, which allows us to carry over from one version to the next. Luckily, in the internet computer, we already have a concept to do exactly that, called a catch-up package. 
SketchUp packages are snapshots for consensus, and they contain all relevant information required for consensus to resume from it. They're already signed by the subnetwork, so we gain trust from that signature. That catch-up package can then be used as a snapshot to carry over between the two versions. The only requirement for the catch-up package is that it has to be able to be readable from both the old version v1 and the new version v2, so it has to be backwards and forwards compatible. Note that since we clearly separate between these two versions, we could imagine that we run even a completely different consensus algorithm starting from version H plus one, because we never have communication between the v2 version and the v1 version. Here are some of the challenges we have when upgrading uh, IC nodes. We need to make sure that each node in the subnetwork runs the correct IC version. All honest nodes must participate in version v1 until we have this handover cup and then join as a v2 node and start producing blocks as v2. If some of the honest nodes would uh, run an incorrect version of the internet computer, the entire subnetwork could get stuck. Of course, the problem we are facing here is decentralization. Building that cup is a collective effort by all nodes in the subnetwork, and we do not know which of the nodes participated in creating it. So we need to go and ask all of those nodes. But keep in mind that those nodes might be running at different internet computer versions now. In order for a node to decide which version it should be running, it first goes to the registry and finds out which subnetwork it should join. With that, it also finds out who the peers are. Note that this information doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. It can be slightly outdated. We just need to get a feeling for who our peers are. Then we go and ask all of them what the latest cup is that they have been producing. We fetch the cup from our peers over a separate communication channel using a cup endpoint. We do not use the P2P layer for it. That allows us to keep the code that is running here relatively little and makes it easier to keep it backwards and forwards compatible. Now that we have received cups from all our peers, we can check their subnet signatures to verify correctness. We can then take the highest cup from all the cups we have received and determine the internet computer version we should be running from that cup. Now, if one of our peers is malicious, and tries to give us a cup which is invalid, we would see that because the signature would not be correct. If one of the nodes would be really far behind, we would simply not look at that cup because it wouldn't have the highest uh, block height number. So in the end, we would end up with the most up-to-date cup, and that would allow us to find out which internet computer version we should be running. Now that we have seen how we use the cup to decide which version of the internet computer we should be running and reboot the new version with that, let's have a look at how we actually create that cup. This is a simplified view of the consensus protocol. We have a series of blocks from 27 to 30, and we have a series of states, in that case 27 and 28. Now in that new block 30, we are using a new registry version R, which triggers the upgrade. Consensus now knows that it has to build a cup at that height, but it cannot currently do it because it didn't yet compute the state 30. Before we can compute the state and height 30, we need to finalize the block 30. In order to reach finalization on those blocks, we need to continue producing uh, empty blocks until we finally have a finalization for a block larger or equal to 30. Once we have that finalized block, we can compute state 30 and finally certify it. Once we have certified state 30, we have all the information necessary to build a catch-up package for that height. We can then use this cup as a handover point between the two versions. Note that we need to make sure that the empty blocks we have been creating in the version one to produce the finalization have to be empty, as otherwise we would further modify that state. We also need to make sure that artifacts from version one will not uh, spill over to version two, and that's why we need to annotate each of the artifacts with the version number. Note that we have multiple blocks of the same height here because we needed to produce further blocks in version v1 in order to reach finalization. I have shown you a lightweight solution to protocol upgrades, which is mostly based on existing mechanisms we already had in the internet computer. It allows us to roll out patches in rapid succession, even including protocol changes. We can do all of that with little user-perceived downtime.